Bonjour. Bonjour. Welcome to So French, the show about the twists and turns, intrigues and insights to all things French. Every two weeks, we select the best, most interesting and fascinating of French news stories, all brought to you from our studio in the heart of Paris. My name is Stefan Fries. And my name is Sarah Bettelson. This week, we talk about the controversy regarding French police's non-lethal so-called flashball weapons use, a necessity to protect the officers and avoid chaos, or is it a threat both to life and civil rights? And who would have thought that the countries of herring and potatoes, that's the Scandinavian nations, one day would become Olympic champions in gastronomy? Incredible. That's exactly, though, what happened in the French food capital of Lyon this week. And who's this? And then there, and we'll let you know a little bit later in the show. But first... France is preparing for the return of dozens of French jihadists held by Kurdish authorities in Syria after the United States announced the withdrawal of its forces. Its interior minister said on Tuesday, marking a shift in Paris policy on the issue. Certains sont déjà revenus, nous les mettons en prison, nous les connaissons et ceux qui reviendront s'ils devaient revenir, ils Donc, seront mis en prison. Revenir dans les semaines qui viennent. Vous savez que les Américains se désengagent de Syrie. Non mais, actu... non, mais oui, mais c'est important d'avoir ça en tête. Il y a actuellement des gens qui sont en prison et qui sont tenus parce que les Américains sont là et qui vont être libérés. So this was the uh, interior minister Christophe Castaner. Sarah, what, what did he say exactly? Well, he said that the, these people are French before they became jihadists, and uh, that France has an obligation to to take together to take back these people and judge them or deal with them on French soil. And of course, this is a question and an issue that French. Authorities have been struggling with for years now. Yeah. Uh, remember, yeah. there are more than a th I think we've talked about more than a thousand French citizens who went to uh, either Iraq or or Syria to fight for the Islamic State group. Uh, many, of course, have been killed. Some of them been um, arrested and uh, and are held in Iraq. Uh, but the problem now is with these. Uh, who are those who are held in Syria because, as you mentioned, they're held by the Kurdish authorities, but under the watchful eye of the Americans, yeah, of course. Who are going to leave. Who are going to leave. And that leaves a vacuum. And, you know, either, well, the, Tur the, the Kurds are saying, you know, either you set up an international court uh, for war crimes here in, in, in Syria and or, uh, well, they might be just left out in the... In, in nature. Yeah. And, and that is, of course, uh, something that no one is interested in. So th th this is a, is, is a big debate. And of course, as everything else, this has polarized French, politi yeah. French political parties. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, first there was the debate a, uh, a couple of months ago about bringing back children. But now it's also about bringing back parents. Um, and of course, indeed, uh, the announcement of the interior minister was met with a lot of... Um, Well, criticism, of course, by the opposition on the right, uh, mainly. Um, one of the uh, right MPs said that um, they should be shot down, something like that. Yes, well, <laughs> that France should just go down there and, and, yes, and kill these people because that would solve the problem once and for all. It's been a bit ridiculized because, of course, that's not uh, that's something for a, a respected state to do, even though we know that François Hollande actually did. He has admitted to that. He did approve some of these targeted killings. But that was of people. I mean, it was a, it was a different circumstance. Uh, in this case, there are people, these people actually, they're held. They're already in prison. It's just a question of what will happen to them next. It's not people who are, you know. Yeah. And then, of course, Marine Le Pen of the National Rally Party, the former Front National, uh, she was also uh, very upset uh, that uh, France uh, is bringing back jihadists uh, to the country. But yeah, legally, I mean, if they only have the French nationality, then it's pretty logical um, that they are bringing been brought back here to to France to be judged, um, but that's not really what the uh, the conservatives and the extreme right want. And the thing is, I mean, so yes, if they come back, what will happen to them? What will happen next to them? Let's say they are they're judged, they're put in French prisons. Then you have another decision to make: Will you keep these jihadists um, together with other prisoners? Yeah. With the risk of, of course, them sort of contaminating the rest of, you know, spreading their message, or will you isolate them with other risks, of course, that you know, 
you, you do already know that they will communicate with others, that's for sure, but also maybe even radicalize them, them even more. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, uh, so it, it's, it's a massive, massive question, of course. And this is what many or some at least have described as a, a ticking bomb here in, in, in France, because with all these people then filling up the, the prisons, so we know the French prisons, they're already overcrowded. Yeah. They don't have enough resources to actually, if if you believe, you know, in in the idea that you could actually get someone out of, uh, de-radicalize someone, or or get them in on a a more uh, normal direction in life, you know, take up their studies or try to get a, you know, these kind of programs they don't work already, and with these extreme cases of very very radicalized people, the question is, of course, how are the how's the 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 justice system and the, police, uh, the prison system going to cope. Absolutely. And we've seen also the pattern in the past that uh, the, the people who commit terrorist, terrorist attacks here in France usually went into prison as pretty criminals and then they came out radicalized. That's also what yes. happened to the to the terrorists in Strasbourg, exactly. the Christmas market. Um, so there is a big risk indeed. Now, there was some, um, the numbers, the exact numbers were not entirely clear. The minister talked about 130 people. I think they're not really, they don't want yeah. to confirm exactly how many, uh, how many people we're talking about here, but I think around 130, I think, uh, held by the Kurds in in northern and eastern syria uh, but uh, they're staying they're very vague on the on the exact numbers yeah yeah and now other european countries are struggling with the same issue of course there are a lot of belgium um, um jihadists um less from the north of europe but still um and they all all these countries they don't really have a clear answer to what to do either with the children or with the a jihadist. Yeah, because the children as well. I mean, even though the France has said from the beginning we will take back the children, th these children they have no, they never asked to to go either to go there or to be born there. They're of course completely innocent in this in this case, but uh, they will one day become adults. And how will these children? I mean, everything that happens from now and until that when they become adults is of course be very very important on how they look at the French state how they see their own place in French society and the European society so very very important questions to to be answered and important measures yeah. to be I, I was I was I found it interesting that after the interview with the minister Christophe Castaner after he announced it there was actually very little in the news in the French media. It wasn't even on the front page of Le Monde. Um, so do you think the French don't really care about this topic? I, 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 I thought it would, you know, generate more attention, but apart from the extreme right and the conservatives, nobody really reacted. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, do, I did see that Le Figaro, which is a conservative paper, they had a big, uh, a big dossier or a big file on, on these issues uh, the other day. Uh, maybe people also feel that we've gone through this, uh, this debate so many times yeah. before. And maybe people don't really realize either the new, the, the change of situation on the ground. We have been talking a lot about the, the fact that the Americans are going to withdraw from, from Syria, but I'm not sure that the average person really understand what that means and what the, why that changes uh, the fact that, you know, we will have to take this, uh, this jihadist back to France. Yeah, so yeah, we'll probably uh, stay um, a controversial topic and, and well, we, we don't know what's really going to happen because after the announcement... We don't. We have uh, yeah, to other people said, "Well, maybe it's not really 130." So. The thing is, it's not decided exactly. No. It's not clear yet when the Americans are really going to withdraw either. So I guess um, as long as they're still there, the French will not be too keen on getting their jihadists back. Vous écoutez So French. You are listening to So French. Now, Stefan, we are going to. There, there is there is new preparations, uh, on a new episode of the Yellow Vest protests, uh, episode 12. 12? I think. Yeah, okay. 11 was I lost last count. Week. <laughs> I lost count. There, there are months of these protests every weekend, yeah. and as every weekend previously, you won this weekend. Uh, but however, last weekend we saw a little uh, a change. 
uh, yeah, in, it was in, who were protesting. Exactly. Yeah, on Saturday, again, the yellow vests uh, took to the streets in, in Paris and other cities, about 4,000, I think, in, in Paris. But then the next day, for the very first time, there was a uh, counter demonstration of people who were fed up with the yellow vests. Well, oh, well, um, just to clarify, yeah. are they fed up with the yellow vests or are they fed, fed up with the protests? Because to protest because you're against the protests seems a little <clears> bit. <throat> yeah, that's interesting indeed. Well, it, it is a bit mixed because I went to that demonstration and I talked to uh, a couple of people. Uh, let's have a listen to two of them. But they should stop the first, they should think, and then they act. Uh, but it doesn't happen. To to break everything, to, 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 to destroy everything, and then to rebuild the nation. Where are we now? We are not in the Middle Ages, and that has to stop. I think that this movement is uh, led by some people who, who belong to the far right and uh, who don't belong to the first people who launched this movement. So I think that now we have to protest against these fascists. So you see these people, well, it's, it's not clear whether they're fed up with the yellow vest, but what they really uh, are angry about is the use of violence and the fact that a lot of um, shops have been destroyed, that uh, many people have to be uh, had to be fired or at least temporarily. So they wanted to protest against the uh, violence. A lot of people wore T-shirts with uh, Stop uh, Violence, uh, Ça Suffit, That's Enough. Um and of course, there, there has been a lot of violence over the last two and a half months. Uh, but I also had the impression that, first of all, most of the protesters, there were about, I think, between f five and 10,000. Most of them were really old. And by, by really old, I mean, I'm sorry. Really old. <laughs> really, like, 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 <laughs> no, but at least 60. So, you know, a lot of... Uh, uh, you going to pay well, for this one? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, one day. <laughs> Well-to-do people. Um, I, I think about maybe... Uh, a fifth were under 30. Uh, so it was um, uh, yeah, a very homo homogenic group. Do you think that's symptomatic of something? That, what does that say about... Uh, well, it's hard to say. I spoke to one lady. She said, I'm, I'm, I'm not a bourgeois. Uh, that's not why I'm here. I'm, I'm earning 1,500 euros a month. So I also have difficulties uh, to reach the end of the month. But, you know, I, I don't want this violence. And I have some understanding for these yellow vests, but they, they have gone too far because the stereotype of the people who are against the yellow vests, uh, that's also what the yellow vests say, that they are bourgeois, rich people uh, who do, don't pay, uh, you know, the wealth tax or, you know, they benefit from all the measures of Macron. But that wasn't really the case on Sunday, but still you can see is it is a certain type of uh, class of people, of course. And, and interesting enough, Interestingly enough, um, the police was no, well, there was some police, but n not as much as, as during the protest of the Yellow And Vest. no clashes between. There were no clashes. There were just at the end of the demonstration at the Place de la Bastille was a group of yellow vests, like 20 people, uh, insulting the others, the, the red scarves. They call themselves the red scarves. <laughs> so it's a whole parade of colorful <laughs> <laughs> dresses. We're all waiting for the blue jeans. <laughs> yeah, and, and the green berets. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what, what else. Uh, men in white suits. Um, so, But they were, were insulting each other. So also the red scarves shouted insults. And in between, there was a huge amount of police separating them. So, uh, But it was the first time that, that some people said, okay, this is enough. We don't want this violence any longer. Um, but nevertheless, on Saturday, there were incidents again, and uh, especially um, a debate about uh, the lethal, well, non-lethal weapons used by the French police forces as, as one of the few European police forces. Um, and that also went out of hand, more or less, again. Yes, because during those Saturday protests, one of the a very prominent uh, yellow vest protester uh, actually got... Uh, injured in his eye yeah. by something and this is the question uh him and the yellow vest protesters are saying that this was caused by a so-called flashball weapon uh, used by the police uh, the police has so far not confirmed uh, the interior ministry neither uh, whether this was actually the case uh, but it's and this of, was all filmed live on Facebook. He was filming. Yes, exactly. Uh, and you could see that he was not taking part in yeah, any violent yeah. action at all. That's important. Too. And on his Facebook video, he said also, uh, he talked to the police officer. He said, don't, don't uh, aim this weapon at my face, you know. And so, and then he got hit uh, two seconds later. Um, and he probably lost the use of his eye. Right exactly. Eye. For, yeah. Forever. He will be yeah. disabled for yeah. life. Uh, after this. Uh, and so uh, it has been a big debate and it was already ahead of 
last weekend's protest, a, yeah. a debate about this weapon, uh, and it was decided then that police 